Welcome back. Welcome back. Your weekly dose of CVTV. Our present situation is as follows. Efforts to aid the people of Garlemald have begun in earnest. Moreover, having entered into the capital, the Imperial Palace is within our reach. But before we proceed further, we must learn what has befallen this city. For therein lies the key to understanding and combating the Tolofaroi's designs. I have a suggestion, if I may. Several of the Imperial soldiers we captured on the Magna Glacias are members of the Popularis and acquaintances of mine. Once we have cured them of their tempering, they should be able to give a reliable account of the events leading to the capital's downfall. Very good. How convenient. A promising idea. I will assist the healers and their ministrations. Of course, I will require a proxy of my own, assuming you can spare one. Would you like a hand? No, no, I am sure we will manage. Better that you take my place in the field. The noxious ether of this place disagrees with me, and as I shall need to draw on my own for the treatment, it will be prudent for me to remain within the camp. Look at you taking care of this your own This talk needs. of curing the tempered yeah. is all well and good, but I reckon the cold is a more pressing concern. Self-care. Way to go, you stole. All the houses round here are fitted with ceruleum eaters that could keep us warm and toasty. Problem is, the machines seem to have given up the ghost, and if we keep sitting around, freezing our asses off, we'll be next. My smiths reckon that with the right parts, they can have them working again, but it won't be easy. Understood. The machinists will assist them in the repairs. The rest of us should either stand watch or survey the area. We've made our presence known to the Tilofroi. They will be searching for us, if they have not already ascertained our position. That we have seen no sign of them since the battle suggests they have yet to do so. However, I suspect they may be biding their time. Or perhaps we are beneath their notice. Mm-hmm. Insects. In any event, we'll find no answers standing around here. Uriange, Estinian, and myself have visited Garlemald recently, so we'll lead the reconnaissance efforts. Perhaps bolstered by a few Bosnian and Dalmaskian scouts from my previous excursion for good measure. Don't forget about us Alamegans. We have experienced scouts of our own. Well now, this is turning out to be a rather sizable team. With such numbers, we should be able to cover a wide area with relative ease, including that surrounding the Imperial Palace. How about you, Graha? I have a feeling we'll find a use or two for that vanishing spell of yours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Twould be my honor to be of service, though I doubt that you of all people need rely on my tricks. That leaves us with guard duty. As a matter of fact, I have something else in mind for the two of you and Alphano. The two of you and Alphano. Not the three of you. Between here and the center of the capital lies the Eblen Rhine. I would have you search the area for survivors. Your keen sense of direction, honed in your extensive travels, should prove useful in navigating the ice fields. Because I use a map. Yeah, we're the only ones that have an interactive map. <laughs> That's why we're so good. What you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> These are great. If there are any survivors, we will surely find them. I have faith that you will and look forward to greeting you on your safe return. Thanks. You all have your duties. Let us make haste. May the Fury bless and keep you. Let's 
magic to them. <laughs> she just turns around there's like, ah, where did you come from? Airships. Then there might be a way to... Licinia, where is everyone? <laughs> I, is something the matter? Who's that behind you, crazy lady? Look. She is sus. Look at me being Gen Z. I don't know. She's so sus, guys. <laughs> <laughs> TV is totally. I'm with it. Totally with it. I am so with it. I'm gonna pretend like I understand what you just said. They're they're bussing Riz and they're glazing goats. I don't know what the hell you just said. I have zero clue what bussing Riz is. You know what you know what bussing Riz is. What's a glazed goat? What is Riz? Well, I, I know what goat is. That one I've heard, but like glazing the goat? Good with goats, but what about glazing goats? Oh, having game. Oh, bussin' Riz. Where does Riz come from though? <laughs> now I'm curious. Who knows where any of these come from? Normally there's an origin though. There is some type of origin. TikTok. It all comes from TikTok. It all comes TikTok from that. TikTok should be... You heard that TikTok that, thing the kids are doing these days? That damn TikTok should be banned, let me tell you. It's just poisoning our youth. Uh-oh. They all left. I told you that girl was crazy. I'm telling you, she did something, that crazy lady. By the fire. <laughs> I love it. You know what? I think... I think they might have knocked out Alfie and hit him behind the house or something. Oh my God. I'm trying to help them, you idiot. To protect them from you. Better for them to flee, keep their purity intact than be corrupted by your vile magics. All right, be careful. Bye. Hi. Somber moment. Oh my God. trail we found one they were attacked no Safer to brave the wilds than trust in our magic. We should have... I should have... We can't leave them like this. We have to take them home. What if we're only making it worse? Maybe we don't belong here, but neither do they. Not out here in the wind and the cold. I heard the story about Varus's voice from beyond the grave. 
Of course, I didn't believe it. But Licinia and her sister did. Perhaps there is something to the tale after all. I want to understand. So I'm going to borrow this for a while, if that's all right. You had every reason not to trust us. We came as trespassers, invaders. But I pray that in time, we will be more than that to you. That we will find a way to help your loved ones. And see that no more children are left to freeze alone in the snow. Thank you for your report. We shall inform the troops of these developments and instruct them to proceed with the utmost caution should they encounter any survivors. Allow me to go and speak with the ones at the Victor's Spoils. They may be more willing to listen to a fellow Garlean and accept our offer of assistance. I pray you are right. And though I am loath to burden you any further, should there be an appropriate occasion to speak of Lacinia and her sister? Please do so. I am sorry to have put you through this. My distress is nothing compared to their suffering. So tell me, what else have we learned? As you may have already heard, we have succeeded in curing the members of the Popularis, Maxima identified. They have provided us with some intriguing insights into the current state of Garlemald. Tell us. The assassination of Emperor Varus was the catalyst for the civil war. Nerva declared his claim to the throne, and his opponents refused to recognize it. Fighting broke out in the capital where Nerva's third legion clashed with the first, who remained loyal to Varus even after his death. Of course, even Imperial warmongers would balk at the idea of turning their shining city into a battleground. Like burning down the wood to spite the wasps. Neither side would be so mad. Unless something or someone inflamed their animosity to such an extent that they could not help but act against their better judgment. It brings to mind events of the Gimlet Dark, does it not? The Emperor's sudden withdrawal from the front line, specifically. Nerva and his father, Titus, Varus's then political rival, took advantage of rumors that Crown Prince Zenos had been possessed by a demon. Elidibus. What better way to disparage your enemies than with the truth, or a close enough approximation? Indeed. But before their accusations could be substantiated, many of Titus's followers were silenced. While some were merely stripped of their status, others died under curious circumstances. One after another, suddenly and suspiciously. Again, Elidibus. Like as not, he had a hand in it. No evidence was found to implicate Varus, certainly. Nevertheless, Titus, Nerva, and the Third Legion would have judged it a brazen attempt by the Emperor to rid himself of his political enemies. And then, in the midst of this growing turmoil, Varus Soskalvis is murdered. And Garlemald's own prodigal son, Gaius van Belsar, is named the murderer. How convenient. Shortly thereafter, Nerva claims the right of succession. And in response, the First Legion claims the assassination was part of a coup d'etat orchestrated by Titus and Nerva. So no one is at fault, and everyone else is to blame. I should add that both parties received substantial financial backing presumably to provide them with the means and encouragement to pursue a swift victory, and that these contributions came from the self-same benefactor. 
I'd heard House Brutus had been filling the Third Legion's coffers, but the first as well. It would seem so. Though the Popularis determined that the First Legion received funds from a variety of organizations, all had connections to House Brutus. So Fandaniel, in the guise of Arsahi, was playing both sides against each other the entire time. The information we gained from my friends does not end there. One night, shortly after fighting broke out, the capital was shaken by an immense tremor. From that point onward, they have no memories, no recollection of any events, including our clash on the Magna Glacias. But when asked about the Imperial Palace and its bizarre transformation, they somehow recall Emperor Varys giving them orders in their dreams. From the radio. Hmm. May the Tower of Babel stand as testament to the glory of Garlemald. This sounds awfully familiar. We have something to show you all. It's what they call in this land a radio. <laughs> Varys spoke to them through this radio. Perhaps it was a recording, but if not, that would be inexplicable. We are of one mind, then. The ether that permeates the ore used in this device is almost identical to that of the talismans. I see it. While it is likely more by coincidence than design, these devices might also ward against a primal's influence. Oh. A picture is beginning to form. If the tremor felt throughout Garlemald was a wave of ether emitted by a primal, then while those within range would have been tempered, those huddled around a radio desperate for news concerning the Civil War would have been spared. No wonder Licinia kept it close. My friends, I must speak with you! A young man was caught trying to steal our supplies. He is a soldier of the Iron Men, we think, but one who has not been made thrall. Thankfully, Magni restrained him before blood was spilled. The stranger is outside, if you wish to ask him questions. I think we do. Who do we have here? Garlians? Traitors to your homeland! Have you no shame? I am Lucia Junius, a Temple Knight of Ishgard. And you are? Julius Pier Norbanus. And that's all you invaders will get from me! We are not here to invade Garlemald. Far from it. Like you, our allies in Eorzea and the Far East fight in defense of their lives and their loved ones even as we speak. But it is the people of Garlemald who have suffered most. This we know. And that is why we have come to offer you our aid, that we may unite against our common foe. Whether you believe me or not, those are the facts. Now, answer me this. Why would a proud soldier of the Empire be reduced to stealing? The situation must be dire indeed for you to go to such lengths. <clears throat> if it is supplies you seek, we would gladly share ours, or turn a blind eye while you leave with your spoils. I will not negotiate. My commander will determine how to deal with you and yours. If you wish to treat with him, I will take you, but no more than three. <laughs> yes. 
You I don't much like the sound of that. But if we do accept his proposal, I suggest the two of us and... You went from, I'm not giving you anything to, well, I'll take you to my boss. Let's, I'll take you to my boss. Let's go. Please allow me and Alize to act as envoys. May I ask why? We have seen with our own eyes the hardships the Guardians face. How their futures and lives hang in the balance. It's not the warmest invitation, but it's an opportunity to prove our intentions true. Maybe not a chance to make things right, but a chance to make them better. <laughs> Dang. I'm going with you. I can see that persuading you otherwise is a lost cause, but you will proceed with the utmost care. Yes, Commander. A couple of children and what? A cell sword? Is this an insult? Not in the least. You will find that they are more than qualified to speak on our behalf. There are many dangers on the road ahead. I will need that back. These are their chosen representatives. Very well. Let us hear what they have to say. Imposing commander. Yes, sir. I present to you our commander, Lord Quintus Van Kena, Legatus of the First Legion. The First? I had no idea you had survived. We lost our emperor, our city, more than half our troops. For my wounds, I may never take the field again. But we survived, I. Oh, he yeah. has. Okay. In a manner much to your liking, I dare say. We have no intention of adding to your misfortunes. Nor do we bear you any ill will. Spare me. Though you children may speak in earnest, overtures of peace ever ring hollow in my ears. So long as man stands to profit from his neighbor's suffering, war is inevitable. Driven from our ancestral homeland into this blasted waste, yet still you yearned to rob us of our paltry scraps. It was only with Magitek that you learned to keep your distance. Though we knew it was only a matter of time before you regrouped and returned. Conquest and Empire were our only defenses. Emperors Solus and Varys understood this, and through their campaigns saw us grow and prosper. Much blood has been spilled in Garlemald's name, aye. But if it is a choice between yours and mine, then it is hardly a choice at all. I do not deny that a great many conflicts throughout history were driven by the desire or necessity to gain by another's loss. That is not why we are here. Nor have we come to petition your aid in the war with the Telophoroi, grave though that threat may be. Our purpose is simply this. We wish to help you. Let us help you. If there is aught that can be done to ease your plight, we would be glad to do it. Perhaps you would. But regardless of the ideals you espouse, your leaders would not send an army into Garlemald if they
they did not stand to benefit. If we accept their aid, they will expect their efforts to be rewarded once the Telophoroi are no longer a threat. And after compensation and concessions, the great empire would be brought to heel. Her enemies rejoice at her downfall. Our third eye, a mark of shame. We won't stand idly by and let your people be humiliated. And we're not alone in that. We only want to make a difference, to make this world of ours better. Surely you can understand that. What I'm trying to say is, there are so, so many people who just don't care about making you suffer. And maybe that's almost insulting after all the suffering you feel the world has subjected your people to, but... Believe it or not, that's the truth. And now we're here, and all we're asking is for you to tell us what you want, what you hope for. So much blood has been shed, so much lost, all because of this endless war. Who wouldn't want to end it? Can we not work together? To face our problems as one? Answer me this, young peacemakers. If a world without conflict is your desire, why reject the unity and prosperity of Garlemald? Is it because we do not share your faith? That we do not share your heritage? That our ideals and virtues differ? That we cherish and hold in the highest that which you do not? Disparity is the root of discord, and peace built on compromise is flawed and fleeting. Happiness for one and all is a dream, and the reality is that to the victor go the spoils. It's true, because you shouldn't compromise. You should collaborate. That is why we Garlians will never submit nor surrender. For freedom and for pride, we will remain true to ourselves until the bitter end. That is my hope. It seems there is nothing more to say on the matter. You will remain here while I decide what is to be done with you. Do not be alarmed. No harm will come to you, if you cooperate. We will not resist. However, as your guests, I ask that we be allowed to speak with the other members of your group. As you wish. I had no intention of locking you up, as by dawn you would be frozen stiff and you're no good to me dead. You are free to move about the encampment, but there is one condition. Collar them. What are these? Can't use magic either. Incentive. You'll be watched at all times. Stray too far or act suspiciously, and we will administer a rather painful shock. Okay. Dog collars. Stop. Keep away from that one. The champion of Eorzea is not so easily cowed. Yeah. That's right. What he said. See, we didn't just give ourselves that title. Even if she allowed herself to be collared, the shock would be no more than an itch. No, 
If she refuses to obey, we will activate the twin's restraints instead. It says he on my... You needn't worry about us. We'll forget we're even wearing them soon enough. Even now, you still... Why go to such lengths? What is it all for? Well, on the coldest, blackest of nights, meager though it may be, we must share the warmth of our fire. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that one. All right. I mean, you got to let us know if we can hit it in a single stream day so then we can plan for it. <laughs> you will know better than us. <laughs> Was that Orchie? You are a curious one. A far cry from the merciless barbarian others paint you to be. Thanks. You will be their warden. Take them away. Yes, sir. That's it for Final Fantasy! <laughs> y'all are awesome. <laughs> we love y'all.